Returning to our story, the jury's heard how the lawyers framed the Kermit Gosnell case. The prosecution says the abortion doctor is a murderer who made a practice of delivering live babies, then killing them in cold blood. The defense says it's a racist prosecution of an inner city doctor doing his best for poor women with nowhere else to turn. Now the jury would hear from people who actually worked in the clinic, what they saw and what they did. March 18th began a five week parade of witnesses for the prosecution. To Peter Boyer, the trial testimony lent a new dimension to the horrifying allegations of the grand jury report. The first employee to, uh, to testify at the trial was Adrian Moten. She told the court um, that she had snipped uh, the spines of 10 babies who had been born alive. She did these things and was asked, was that murder? Did you consider it wrong? And she said, you know, at first I didn't. The testimony captured for Boyer with the German philosopher Hannah Arendt talking about the Holocaust called the banality of evil. There was a, uh, another employee who gave uh, testimony, a young woman named Linda Williams. She talked about the snipping of the spinal cord and she was asked, did you have any awareness that this was murder? And she told the jury, I only do what I'm told to do. What I was told to do was snip their neck. This was some of the most horrifying testimony that I ever sat through in a courtroom. Kimberly Guilfoyle is a former sex crime prosecutor. I looked into the eyes of those jurors. I'm wondering how they're ever going to be able to get this out of their heads because these photos are blown up of these big, full-term, almost essentially, babies. And you just, you see life there. In cross-examination, Gosnell's lawyer, Jack McMahon, tried to undermine the prosecution's case, count by count. He painted some witnesses as disgruntled employees. He suggested the prosecution used threats of the death penalty and long prison terms to get clinic workers to plead guilty to crimes they didn't commit. He said all the babies Gosnell's charged with killing were already dead, or at best doomed, because he'd injected them with a drug to stop their hearts. And he scored his biggest point during the testimony about baby boy B, a baby the prosecution alleges who was born alive at 28 weeks, then killed by Gosnell and placed in his freezer. The defense attorney, Mr. McMahon, got up and he has a very like, booming voice and he moved around and circled right in front of the jury to show that he wasn't afraid of the evidence that he had seen the photos too. And he questioned the chief medical examiner and asked him, can you say with a reasonable degree of medical certainty that this baby was born alive? And the witness said, no, I cannot. With that testimony on a defense motion, the judge himself acquitted Gosnell of the murder of baby boy B. He also threw out the murder charges relating to babies F and G. The judge did not explain his ruling, but Fox News medical expert Dr. Mark Siegel says the judge is wrong if he based his ruling on the fact that those babies had been observed moving, but not necessarily breathing. There may be some debate about whether life begins at conception, but I'll tell you what there's no debate about. If a baby is born and you need to use a respirator to get that baby breathing, that's life, that's a viable life. Either way, the defense had knocked out three of the seven capital murder charges against Gosnell before it even began presenting its case. That was scheduled to begin Wednesday, April 24th. But when court went into session that morning, another bombshell. The defense rested without calling a single witness. No medical experts, no clinic employees, no satisfied patients, no Gosnell himself. It was a high risk move. Kermit Gosnell's attorney was gambling the doctor's life on a closing argument. A closing argument that would reignite the explosive charges made at the outset of the trial that his client was the victim of a racist, elitist prosecutor who refused to acknowledge the realities of abortion in America. After the break. It's for your scalp. More than two years since the allegations were leveled at Dr. Kermit Gosnell and nearly two months since his trial started. 
it was time to finally come to terms with what did or did not happen in his West Philadelphia abortion clinic for the jury and for the nation as well. When Kermit Gosnell's trial started, something odd happened, or to be more precise, didn't happen. The seats reserved for the media were empty. We have a mainstream media that typically likes to cover any issues related to reproductive rights or abortion very thoroughly, but generally this, this trial was ignored. Columnist and political commentator Kirsten Powers, a Fox News contributor, was appalled and wrote a USA Today piece saying so. You would have had to have been following either activist blogs on the right or the left or the local Philadelphia news if you'd wanted to know anything about this. The trial of abortion, Dr. Kermit Gosnell. In the same way that there are very serious policy implications when there's a mass shooting like what we saw in Newtown, there are very serious implications about what happened at this abortion clinic. So I was quite shocked that I had not heard anything about this. With so little press attention, most Americans had never heard of the Gosnell case, according to a Fox News poll. Of those who were following the trial, a majority attributed the lack of national news coverage to media bias. Far fewer figured it was just a local story or too gruesome to tell. Anti-abortion leaders say if Americans know what happened in Gosnell's clinic, many more would oppose legalized abortion. But some pro-choicers believe just the opposite. I'm happy to see this story given play because I think of uh, because of what I think it teaches us about where America is and, where, and how much harm our policies are doing to women. Pennsylvania State Senator Dalen Leach thinks if Americans know what happened in Gosnell's clinic, they will be more likely to support policies that will give poor women more access to better abortion services. No one is defending what Gosnell did. No one's defending his practices. No one is defending that conduct. But Gosnell lawyers would offer a defense of what they say their client really did in his clinic. And the jury would hear it during the trial's closing argument. The media would hear it too. For it's worth noting that when Jack McMahon, Gosnell's defense lawyer, stood up to speak, the press section of the courtroom was packed. Fox News editor-at-large Peter Boyer was there. Gosnell's uh, attorney asserted once again that it was an elitist and racist prosecution. He said that his client had been singled out because he was an African-American providing abortion services in an urban community. But he did a lot more than just play the race card. Dr. Gosnell's attorney told the jury, you're not here to decide whether or not abortion is pretty. It's not pretty, it's bloody, it's real. In a way, it was almost like that Jack Nicholson scene in A Few Good Men. He was saying, this is abortion. This is what an abortion clinic looks like. I'm providing services to poor people, and you can't handle the truth. The prosecution then painstakingly went through its case against Gosnell one more time. More than 250 criminal counts, racketeering, performing abortions without a waiting period, performing illegal late-term abortions, third-degree murder of Karnamaya Mangar, and in the deaths of baby boy A and babies C, D, and E, four counts of murder in the first degree. A grim catalog of innocent life callously terminated as a matter of routine. The judge reminded the jurors that their duty was to discover the truth, and they began their deliberations. In their hands, the life of Dr. Kermit Gosnell, and it might be said, the conscience of a nation. Wednesday passed, no verdict. Thursday, no verdict. The deliberations continue. Regardless of your view of Gosnell himself, this trial had by the end become less about the fate of one man and more about a turning point in the most enduring and emotional debate in recent American history. Whether you're pro-life, pro-choice, or simply not sure, the case of Kermit Gosnell provides our society with a reality check. Gosnell's abortion clinic did exist under the benign neglect of the authorities. How did this happen? How should we go forward? This case won't be the end of the abortion debate, but it may help clarify it. That's our show for tonight. I'm Brett Baer. Thanks for watching Fox News Reporting.